So what's better than a metal melting furnace for my backyard foundry? Two. Time to make another one. So I bought this kiln about a year ago with the intention of using it for a burnout and vitrification chamber for investment casting. I never got around to doing that because this thing is in rougher shape than I realized and I just didn't really want to repair it. Um, so yeah, I never got around to doing it and I'm tired of moving it around now. So I figured I'd repurpose these fire bricks and make a new furnace for a couple different reasons. One of which I'm not going to talk about in this video. It's a little bit of a surprise you might say, but the other one is I would like to melt cast iron and I don't want to push my other furnace to the temperatures required to melt cast iron. Maybe this will work. Maybe it won't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the trash can down a little bit, um, reattach this rim a little bit lower, and then put the bricks in and then coat it with Castellite 30, which is a really high rated um, castable refractory cement, good for up to 3000 degrees. So hopefully that'll be enough to, uh, to melt some cast iron. But if not, I don't really care because I don't really have much invested in this anyways. The first thing I did is I cut a section out here uh, to drop the overall height to about 17 inches. And I was going to put this on the outside, but I happened to place it on the inside like this, and this is a lot stronger. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, if I could do it again, I would just, I would not have cut a section out. Um, I would have just cut this piece off at about here and then uh, had some added strength, but this will work fine. Right now what I'm doing is I'm just securing this rim in place. Um, I'm using this punching tool. If you don't have one of these punching tools, um, this job is going to be a little bit more difficult, but you can just do it with a drill. This makes it very, very simple. Just pop a hole in there like that and uh, you're good to go. So I just finished installing the rim and I put a couple handles on like my other furnace. Um, put a couple bolts at the bottom. That way the, uh, the bottom doesn't, doesn't push down very much when it's sitting on a flat surface. You can see what I mean there. Now it's time to take apart this kiln. Well, as you can see, I made a huge mess, but I was able to get the bricks in the furnace. I didn't record the whole process because it's just too messy. This stuff's really bad for you, so I was wearing a respirator the whole time. All the bricks are in here. Um, I really didn't have any plan of how I was going to put them in. I just, you know, I just cut them as I went along, and, and I was able to uh, to get them all in there and have some leftovers for plinths and future projects. If I get the camera to move, all right, there it is. Yep, that's what I have left over. This is basically all just waste. So the next step is uh, to line this with Castellite 30. That's a refractory cement. So I'm probably not going to be recording much of that process either because, again, it's really messy and bad for you and I'm going to be wearing, wearing a respirator. So. Here's what the furnace looks like after I installed the Castellite 30. I have to say this stuff is not the consistency that I thought it was going to be. I actually ended up using 20 pounds here. Um, that's way more than I thought. Luckily I had enough, just barely enough to do this. Um, I thought it was going to be more like Satanite. Satanite has a very, uh, very smooth consistency, kind of like sour cream. So this was like very coarse sand with just just wet with water. It wasn't sticky at all. It was very difficult to work with. As a result, I'm not very convinced that the walls are going to stay intact. So I'm going to coat the inside with a thick coating of Satanite after I cure this cement. And this has been sitting for about a week now. So now it's time to make a lid. My original plan was to use the remaining fire bricks from the kiln. Unfortunately, I spent several hours working on that and I just wasn't convinced that it was going to work. So 
I boarded that and now I'm going to make one out of this trash can and some ceramic fiber. I have a bunch of two inch thick ceramic fiber in this box here from my first furnace build. And I'm gonna go with uh, four inches actually. So that's probably pointless, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it since I have the material. All right, I just spent a while cutting up this trash can to make part of the lid. And I didn't record that because I just cut it up with a grinder. You guys have seen that before. Um, so this is what I ended up with here. This is uh, what most of the lid is gonna look like. And the reason I cut up the trash can is because I cut these rims out. This is a rim from the lid here. And then this is a rim from the top of the trash can. Just like that. All right, and then I got this 7 16 thick piece of uh, steel that I bent. This is a little challenging to bend because I don't have a tube bender or anything. So I got managed to get that into a pretty, pretty uh, circular shape. So the next step is going to be to uh, attach some handles. I have some handles right here, and then. I'm going to use this sheet of galvanized steel and cut out the top. And for that, I have a stencil that I made using Matthias Wandel's Big Print program. So I'm going to cut this out and then bend the edges over, fit it in there. And then uh, I'll cut a hole in the top and then some more holes for uh, some bolts. Now I'm going to weld this ring into place, and this is pretty thick steel, it's 7 16 This isn't as, th as thick, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of tack it in place. Also this is galvanized, um, I'm not worried about it. I ground most of this off, and I'm going to be wearing a respirator, so there's no danger if I'm wearing a respirator. It's just like melting brass. When you melt brass, it produces all sorts of zinc oxide. So that's what happens when you weld zinc. I'm going to be using my 90 amp Harbor Freight welder. Uh, it's, the welds are not going to look pretty, but it'll get the job done. It's time to cut out the top of the furnace lid, and I was originally going to use this galvanized sheet that I got at uh, Lowe's. It's about 10 thousandths thick, but I remembered that I have this oil pan, or this uh, drip pan, and it's about 15 thousandths thick, so I'm going to go ahead and use this instead. It uh, won't make much of a difference, but it is about 30% thicker, so this is what I'm going to use. I got this piece welded in place. Uh, that went pretty well. And now this thing is really rigid. Not that it really has to be, but it's nice and strong. The next step is gonna be to attach this top piece. And my plan is to bend these tabs and uh, drill some holes in here. That's gonna be a little bit challenging because it's gonna be tough to get to. And I want this to sit nice and level with the rim here. So I think what I'm gonna do is pop some holes in here first and then place the top piece in and then mark on here where I want to drill the holes. So that's the plan. I'll see if that works. After many hours of working on this thing, it's finally done. I got the top installed. 
the ground the uh, the welds down so it's looking pretty good I'm very happy with it the next step is to uh, install the ceramic fiber which I have over here I take a lot of precautions uh, because this stuff is known to cause cancer I'm always amazed by the amount of videos that I see where people don't uh, don't pay any attention to that they don't wear respirators you know they'll they'll heat it up indoors it's terrible for you don't do that um, so before I install the or as I'm installing the ceramic fiber I'm going to be uh, coating parts of it with a satanite. That's the same same deal there. Don't breathe that stuff either. So I'm not going to be recording a lot of this because I'm going to have my respirator on, and uh, I hope it goes well. So I'll see you when it's done. So here it is after about an hour and a half of drying. Um, I'm already developing some cracking here, but that's okay. I'll just patch those up with the next uh, next coat of satanite. I'm gonna build up a, about a quarter inch or so um, layer of satanite. So yeah, definitely some cracking. I've I've put this stuff on before and I haven't seen the cracking. So I think my mixture was just a little too wet.